Hello, Brad here, just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's Nitro Flushed Hops, Cold Stored Yeast and Milled to Order Malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. It's Friday, it's 5pm and I hope that you have a crisp, cold pint in your hands the first of the weekend and are kicking back expecting some beer knowledge to be imparted, some absolute derailments to happen and of course plugging of my book at some point. Well I'm sorry to say that this week we're actually without Bradley. Bradley is sunning himself in San Francisco. You may think that that was a slightly odd time to go to America given everything that was going on. But um, Brad is a man who lives in the clouds and it's possible he didn't really realise and nor did I when he said he was going away going away at this time of year. So he's picked a slightly strange time to go with the election and what could have been a very joyous occasion for most of the people in California, I would imagine, hasn't quite panned out that way. So I'm going to try and get an update from Brad, maybe a, a sort of a reporter on the ground as to what the election was like for a tourist that probably wasn't entirely sure what was going on. Um, but yeah, other other than him perhaps chipping in next week, uh, he's not going to be here for a little while, although we do still have a video for next week. You'll be glad to hear. So we have a podcast with just me. I had plenty of warning that this was going to be the case and still failed to get a guest, but I'm excited to say that next week all being well, we will have the wonderful Mark Dredge on the show and we'll be able to dig into some of the stories that we've been telling on the channel and indeed on the podcast with his expert eye because uh, certainly for chapter two and three, which are sort of the very lager-based chapters of The Meaning of Beer, Mark Dredge's uh, A Brief History of Lager was the core text and although it wasn't the only text that I looked at, it was certainly the one that I looked at and went, oh, I need to know more about that and then dug further in so uh it would be great to have him on the show we're just trying to work out exactly when we can record but he's very up for it and i think that uh mark and i talking about these stories will tease out lots more exciting stuff um that might not be in the book certainly haven't been in the videos and also we can talk around the opinions of it as two people that that really know the history so hopefully next week we'll have him while brad finishes sunning himself in san francisco and la uh hopefully he's going to do some social postings while he's out there as well so we'll start to see what he's up to. So yeah, we have another episode essentially of just a minute, but with beer involved. But if you are enjoying your first pint of the weekend, I definitely am not because I am suffering from a thing that anybody over 30 will probably know of, which is the two-day hangover. So on Wednesday was the launch party for my book. Uh, I held it at the wonderful Sutton Arms in Clerkenwell, one of the best pubs in London. We're always being asked for tips on where to go to drink in London and the Sutton Arms is the best pub in actual sort of super central West Endy kind of London. Um, It's a great old school boozer. It has an amazing beer range and a great upstairs venue where we were having our little celebration, selling the first of the books a day early, although it seems like lots of people have got the books early anyway, but that's fine. And we had a great time. Lots of industry people, lots of Patreons came down. Huge shout out to those that did and also a huge apology to those that did and then got cornered by my dad who decided not to, I don't know, hang out with his son, not to... Uh, I don't know, read the book. Well, he has read the book. He was one of the people that helped me proof it. Uh, But no, he decided to push his wine agenda onto many of the people that came. So lots of people walked away from my beer-based event um, with a list of French and Italian wines that they might like to try. So thanks, Dad. 
Um, we had a great time. Lots of people came down that have really helped with this book, either through just generally inspiring me, people like Pete Brown, but also people that genuinely were characters in the book, such as Radim from Budvar. It was great to have him there um, and uh, to be able to share the joy that is that man with lots of other people. Um, and of course, Ned Palmer, who I haven't really told this story about the book, but essentially it was reading his book, which is called A Cheesemonger's History of the British Isles, it was that idea that kind of gave me the idea for the meaning of beer. So he uses the history of cheese to tell the history of, of Britain and what was going on at, at the times that these specific cheeses were made. And I thought, nobody's really done that with beer. Lots of people have told the history of beer, but not the history of the world through the lens of beer. So Ned has a lot to answer for when it comes to this three-year project. And I was delighted that he could come. We Every bookshop that I go to to sign copies uh, so that they can you know sell their signed copies, lots of them have signed copies of Ned. He's a hardworking man. And all of them say we need to do a beer and cheese night together. So I'm hoping that, you know, maybe for the launch of the paperback or I don't know, maybe one will creep in this year. There will be lots of beer and cheese events with me and Ned. And given how much we both like to talk, those events will you'll you'll get your money's worth if you're looking for ramble chats. Uh, speaking of which, we do have some events that are coming up where I'll be signing books and doing talks. Um, so on the 14th of November, we've got I've got an event at the beer shop in Hitchin, which is my local beer shop. Um, tickets to all of these events are in the podcast description. On the 19th of the 11th, I'm at Garden City Brewing in Letchworth. On the 21st of the 11th, I'm heading to Sirens Bar in Central Reading. If you haven't been, it's an amazing, amazing spot. And we're going to be doing uh, tasting four, uh, well, three siren beers and one beer from Indie Rabble. Uh, a vice beer and telling uh, some of my favorite stories from the book as well as tucking in some delicious snacks from the kitchen i'm doing a beers of christmas talk at the telebar also in hitchin guess where i live um where we're going to be tasting some delicious Christmas beers and telling some stories from a year in beer as well as the meaning of beer. And then I'm off to the rabbit hole in Brig in North Lincolnshire on the 18th of December to do another talk, similar thing, four beers, four stories from the book, and then we'll be selling books. So if you live either near me or in Reading or in North Lincolnshire, then we have some events. Well, I am hoping to get some more city-based ones, so I'm working on a Manchester event, um, I'd love to do a Leeds or a Sheffield one. So if you're listening and you know a venue or run a venue, do let me know because I'm looking to do more tours, do more events and get out there, particularly into cities because A, they're better attended, but B, I could also potentially make some Craft Beer Channel films when I'm there. Because um, we've, well, we've been working incredibly hard on Keep Cask Alive of late and we haven't been filming sort of many on-location things for breweries that aren't part of that and i'd love to get more into that we did make a promise that we would visit some of the breweries that we were hyping up at the start of the year and that hasn't quite happened for us because mostly because of of, of the book but I, I promise to do that next year more uh more than we have this year so that is i think all of the announcements that i wanted to make and without bradley derailing it that's only taken a couple of minutes so that's uh no that's sad actually really isn't it um all i will say final announcement is that i'm actually going to be doing a solo live show next week next uh next saturday so what's next saturday it's the 16th of november so if you want to pick up a taster pack for that you can buy them from our wonderful sponsors the malt miller um, or just bring any beer that you might want to might want to drink while we're while we're doing this show if you want to sort of dig into the themes of the book, then I'd highly suggest getting hold of a Hellas, a Vice Beer, a Porter, uh, and an IPA. But you don't have to stick to that. We'll be talking about lots of different things because I'm also going to be trialling a new format. It's not going to be me pushing the book at you endlessly. Or, well, no, it is going to be me doing that. But at the same time, I'm going to be trying out a new format that I've been thinking about for a long time and chatting to Brad about doing for a long time. And I thought that while he's not here... Um, we could give this sort of a, a dry run. So this concept, it's called Drink Johnny Dry. And basically, it is a response to the fact that we get endless samples. I think I said in last week's podcast, that I'm basically just surrounded by boxes of beer at the moment. Because I've been so busy, I haven't really been drinking, I haven't really been having friends over. So it's basically all caught up with me. And I have probably 500 beers uh, in my studio or in the boxes outside or in my now three beer fridges 
and I need to deal with that in some sort of way. So what we're going to be doing is I'll be talking about the book quite a bit. We'll be tasting some delicious beers that we brewed for our festival uh, two months ago now. They're still bang fresh. They're all cold stored. Don't worry. But we will also be doing this new format. So the new format is that I will be putting it to a vote somehow. I haven't quite worked it out. Maybe a Google form or maybe just in the comments in which you guys will be choosing what beers I drink next. So there'll be a list of special or indeed terrible things that are in my beer stash, and you guys will be able to choose what you want me to drink and talk about and try. And I would say that at least half of the beers in my stash now are well beyond their best. So anything that's terrible, I will discard. But at least I am trying these beers and discarding them in a purposeful way. I'm not just pouring it down the sink, which is what I've been trying to avoid to do. So I thought it'd be a really interactive and fun thing to do. It'll be a really educational thing about the aging of beer. It'll get us drinking some styles that maybe we don't talk enough about on the channel. I can't remember the last time we mentioned Flemish Red on the channel, but then I also can't remember the last time anybody really mentioned Flemish Red. It feels like it... I mean, it was never trendy, but people used to talk about Duchess and Roddenbach quite a bit, and now nobody really does so it'll be a chance to dig into some of those styles because i've definitely got quite a few flemish reds in my stash including some quite special rodden backs so if anybody's got any suggestions about how they think that should be run i think there might be i might put together a google google form a quiz and people can vote in advance or vote on the night as to what beers i should be cracking uh and so long as we understand that if it's disgusting i'm not going to keep on drinking it we we should be able to get through quite a few beers and have a lot of fun while i also hard sell <clears throat> hard sell the book at you so yeah that is on the 16th it will start at 8 p.m there is a link in the description to the podcast and obviously on the youtube channel as well and yeah you can buy a taster pack from uh, the malt miller should you want to partake in a couple of the beers that i'll be drinking before moving on to the absolute nonsense that i have been holding back and i'm very much looking forward to having space in my brudio um if you're a patreon i might send you a picture of what it currently looks like because it's just it's just mad. And if I want to do any homebrew at the start of next year, a lot of it needs to go. Although I've just clocked a uh, shout out to McColl. They sent me a very exciting package recently with Salute, their dry noble beer, a Saison. And as people all know, I absolutely love their core sort of hoppy Saison. So I'm excited to try this. In fact, that will be my beer tonight should my liver go. You know what? I'm feeling okay now. So yeah, moving on to this week's video, which was, uh, well, firstly, I need to make an apology about it because we had a massive tech issue with this video. You'll be glad to know. Uh, so next week, because I cut this video in half, the tech issue remains. But after that, it sorted itself out on the shoot. But yeah, Brad's mic was popping and fizzing and doing all kinds of mad stuff. So not only do I talk lots and lots and lots in this episode anyway, but I also had to remove some of Brad's talk because you couldn't really hear what he was saying. So actually, the audio you get of Brad is coming from my mic, not from his. So huge apologies for that. That's not not very professional, but I should say lots of people think that we have, you know, a, a crew with us on these shoots that, you know, quite often we get comments going, who finishes the beers? Do you give it to the crew? And like, there's, there's no crew. There's me and there's Bradley. That is the crew. And it always has been other than for our feature length documentaries where occasionally we have a cameraman like the, the wonderful Tom, uh, who did, um, uh, did the time is now with us. It's just me and Brad. So we can't actually monitor the audio once we're rolling, which, you know, I would love to make enough money to have somebody monitoring that. But that is what happened there. We monitored the audio while we were setting up and it was fine. And clearly, you know, as Brad sat down, maybe a, 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 a loose connection was made between his mic pack and, and the wire or I don't know, something was going on that did get resolved when we cut and started filming again later. But yeah, no crew, and we we finished the beers. Um, yeah, so this week's video was about how brewing changed modern medicine slash sort of invented modern surgery. And it's a long-winded thing. It took me a long time to put together this kind of story because although it is a very, very clear link, and we know it from the letter that Joseph Lister sent to Louis Pasteur, and we also know... From, from other references, other communications, that it was specifically a Tudsula beer that Joseph Lister was referring to when he sent that letter. 
it was very hard to trace all that together and to prove it. And I had to read multiple books, chat to multiple people, figure it out and piece these things together. So I apologize if I talked a lot. I just wanted to make sure I got the history right. Uh, and something that we didn't really quite talk about, I don't think, in the video is, is just how significant that was back then. Because it was only a couple of decades before that anesthesia was invented. And while this meant that you know, it was incredible news. It meant that we could operate without causing incredible pain to the patient. What it did is it emboldened the surgeons. It meant they literally dug deeper. They could go further into these bodies, which also meant that with the lack of knowledge that we had, we were much more likely to infect people. So there's there's a quote in my book uh, from a, 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 a doctor who said that surgeons should be sort of ranked alongside executioners, given how many people they kill because of the incredible amount of infections that happened as a result of anesthesia, meaning more surgeries and more intense surgeries so when louis pasteur's discoveries reached joseph lister and joseph lister started applying the theory of acid washes to surgery and to the treatment of wounds that was an incredible step change in terms of the survival rates for people undergoing these kinds of surgeries and i didn't quite get that across in the in the video i'm a little bit annoyed at myself because it really was absolutely game changing and it also was and i didn't really dig into the story very hard for lister to persuade other people that this was working in the same way that louis pasteur really struggled to persuade people a that yeast was alive but b um that these acid, acid washes were working because it was so against the perceived wisdom at the time and so against what the medical establishment really uh were prepared to believe particularly given that it was it was a chemist that was telling them this you know it was kind of the the wrong source of the information so yeah otherwise you know klaxon for a, a video under 20 minutes which rarely happens in the craft beer craft beer channel uh catalog uh but hopefully hopefully you really enjoyed it and there have been some really interesting comments i was super heartened to get a message uh sorry a comment from pack for life 88 who backed up kind of my assertion that this was a real game changer for the medical industry. So uh, he or she said, um, of all the stories you've shared thus far, this, had, this is the biggest impact to beer's influence on the world. And dare I say, there might not be a bigger one. I think you're right. As a home brewer who is lucky enough to work in the pharmaceutical industry, the links between modern medicine and modern brewing are far deeper than you would imagine. We have eradicated diseases and have saved the lives of countless people traced back to the discoveries discussed in this video. A big thank you to beer is deserved. Amen. So we're not going to cover this on the videos. I'm saving lots of great stories for the book itself, but we dig a lot deeper into brewing and medicines kind of Hey Beer Geeks, Johnny here. Just in case I haven't mentioned it enough on the podcast, approached you in the street or accosted you in your own home, I thought I'd make a quick advert about my new book, The Meaning of Beer. This travel book follows me on a three-year adventure around the world to discover the surprising ways in which beer has helped build and shape the world. From inspiring the pyramids to funding monasticism, from inventing the fridge to changing modern medicine, and from lubricating the Nazi party's first meeting to potentially solving climate change, with lots more in between. It's already been called enlightening by the amazing Ollie Smith and one of the most important books ever written about beer by fellow beer writer Mark Dredge. And it's available for pre-order now in hardback, ebook and audiobook for its release on the 7th of November 2024. Now back to the pop. coexistent lives in the book a telling this story in significantly more detail particularly the discovery of the role of yeast in, in fermentation we really dig down into that in louis pasteur's work but in the final chapter of the book which is called the future we talk about how beer is continuing to change the world even after the technological revolution and a lot of that comes down to sequencing of the genome of yeast and things that we've been able to do which involves sort of genetic modifications so that yeast can uh, produce anti-malarial drugs. In fact, the biggest producer of anti-malarial drugs is brewer's yeast. Um, brewer's yeast also produces around half of the world's insulin. It's used for cancer research because yeast metabolizes sugar in the same way as cancer cells. So, uh, uh, sorry, uh, metabolizes glucose in the same way as cancer cells. So you can use yeast to look at, you know, how changes to certain uh, certain genes might have an impact on on cancer cancer uh, tumor growth. So 
We dig into all of that in the final chapter. It is the chapter that I am most nervous about, most worried about, because it couldn't be further away from my area of expertise. But I spoke to some really special and talented people in sort of the GM, GMO world and the bio, I guess, bioengineering world about it. So hopefully it all stacks up and hopefully Pack for Life 88 agrees that it does as somebody in the pharmaceutical industry who homebrews. The other comment that I want to share comes from Kavindra, one of the people who comments on our videos a lot, and we read them out because they're often great. Uh, and this comment is a bit of a backslap, really, but it, uh, they say, when I started watching the channel, I had genuinely no clue how much there was to know about beer. Please keep the history content coming in any form at all. I love these videos because it's simple and feels like you're listening to an enthusiastic mate with a fact to share, which is basically exactly what I want to hear, basically exactly what I think the book is. As well, I try to make it very personal. Lots of people have said that it's funny, which is heartening for me to hear and probably surprising for my wife to hear. But that's very much the vibe of the book and what we try to do here. We, It's interesting. Brad and I, uh, on the podcast last week, I think, had this discussion about whether we should make a video podcast. And Brad was like, oh, I'm not sure I want to. But to me, these episodes are very much a video podcast really you know it's an in-depth long conversation about a specific topic and to be honest a lot of these episodes probably could be released as podcasts or, or even be flagged as podcasts on youtube because that's very much the format that we've gone down here and as i've said before it's very much inspired by things like the rest is history who i think do you know what i love about that podcast and it's now the second second biggest podcast in the u.s i think um i liked it before it was cool well, it's, it's never going to be cool it's it's uh it's a nerdy history podcast, but it, it appears to be having a serious moment because what I think they're so good at, outside of just being historians, is the, the way that they tell these stories are so beautiful. They are so good at spinning the narratives while sticking to historical fact. And when I wrote my book, that was very much what I wanted to do as well. So I'm very glad that it's coming across that way, Kavindra, and to everybody else that really enjoyed this uh, enjoyed this episode. Um, there have been lots of people asking about whether the beer was good and somebody saying uh, it was P Piazzo Nim said you and Brad look like you drank the same amount of Carlsberg as the Budweiser from your other show, which is uh, possibly true, but we, we it's a much better beer than Budweiser, the Carlsberg 1883. I still have three cans uh, right here, which I'm saving for a special occasion I'll tell you about in a bit. Uh, it's a very, it's actually a very good beer. It's very tasty. Got a really unique yeast character to it, which we talk about in part two, in which we'll talk about uh, the isolation of yeast that came shortly after Pasteur's discoveries. And yeah, it's a really, really interesting beer that if you if you ever come across, if you're ever in Denmark, do pick it up because it is quite good fun. Um, but yeah, we didn't drink huge amounts of it because, as you can tell, we were <laughs> halfway through that shoot, and that's why I had to cut it into two so like i say next week is going to be the second half of this video it's all about emil christian hansen and his isolation of yeast and him kind of calling out louis pasteur or at least saying that's interesting but did you consider this that leads to the isolation of yeast that is also sort of the i guess the second half of the story that led to what we've been talking about um with modern medicine and the eradication of diseases and treatment of some of the worst diseases most prolific diseases in the world uh comes from the fact that we managed to isolate yeast in 1883 and then uh 1883 1882 can't remember it's in the book um that leads us to be able to to make all the the huge advances that we make about a hundred years later once we you know we we sequence the genome and start to play around with it. So that is coming next Wednesday, uh, and then hopefully the podcast with Mark, in which we'll be able to dig more into that on Friday as well. Um, that's about all I had to say really this week. Uh, I know it's a really short one. That's because Bradley's not here and uh, he'll be back once he's back from America. Uh, the only other thing I'll say is we do have an extra upload happening next week, hopefully on Monday, which is a short video. You might know I've started doing some more shorts. We're trying to play around with that and try and find a format that works for us. So they're all very different at the moment. This one is about the history of St. Pancras Station which is a story also told in the book, but also an incredible story, very, very related to beer. So that'll be coming out on Monday, then the video on Wednesday, then the podcast with Mark on Friday. Uh, and then we have the live show on Saturday. Good Lord. Is that all right? If I, oh my God, that is, uh, that's an intense week. 
for me. I, though I've not listed it like that before. Um, and also next week, I am recording some really exciting external podcasts. So next week, I am recording with Something You Should Know, which certainly if you're an American podcast lover, you will know. It's absolutely huge in the States, and it's a huge honor and very exciting that I'm going to be on it. Uh, if you don't know, it's a great podcast where basically each week they dig into two, I guess, incredible facts. I don't quite know which fact they're going to pick for this book yet, but it, obviously it will be from from the book and related to that. And then that evening, Tuesday evening, I'm headed to London to record with the Moon Underwater podcast with our friend uh, Robbie Knox, which I'm very excited to do. I absolutely love that podcast. I love the format, the idea. I wish I thought of it. It's incredible. And Robbie is one of my favourite uh favorite youtubers favorite podcasters um and that's going to be great fun and then on wednesday uh i am now going to be recording with uh with cade from the brew lab which is sort of an offshoot of the brew philosophy podcast so we're going to be talking about the book there which is very very exciting uh, thank you very much. I reached out to them after somebody in the comments said that they'd mentioned my book in the podcast. So that's very cool. And then on Friday, I am recording with uh, Brendan from Belgian Smack. So I mentioned a couple of weeks back that I've written a, well, it's now a four and a half thousand word article about the history of West Valletta and the impact it's had on the world. And of course, the incredible stories which involve things like it being voted the best beer in the world and it causing essentially a lockdown in a tiny village in Belgium but also an amazing story if you haven't heard about it there was a brewery in Estonia that took a keg of a quadruple to Tallinn Beer Week claiming it was their own beer but actually what they'd done is decant about 100 bottles of West Valletta and 12 into a keg and then served it as an experiment to see if it would get the same hype without the name attached to it and obviously as I dig into the article there's potential ox oxidation issues and decarbonation issues and stuff and the beer might not have been in the best form but it's a wonderful story that I tell in in this incredibly long article along with the history that really digs down into the idea of hype and where it comes from and whether it obscures sort of truth and objectivity or whether you know it is lots of people speaking their truth and creating a whole new one so that article i think is going to come out before the end of the year i'm very excited to put it out to the world because i don't think anybody's written anything that in depth about certainly about the history of the brewery, but also about its its modern story as well. And we'll be digging into that, lots of interesting questions and, and wider context to be talked about in the Belgian Smack podcast. So yeah, busy old week for me next week. I, th I think I'm doing another podcast as well. Uh, oh God, I don't know. But basically, if you have ears, uh, you're not going to be able to avoid me in a couple of weeks time. So I hope that that's okay with you folks at home. So yeah, that's everything. Brad will be with us in two weeks. Mark will be with us next week. I apologize for the fact that this podcast has felt a little bit like I've been pushing my agendas, but I promise you they're good agendas and there's some amazing content coming out and we have recorded enough in the future that there's plenty of Brad coming your way on the channel. So until uh, Monday slash Wednesday slash Friday, from me, it's love and beer. The Bubble and Friday 5pm podcasts are brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer channel. You can watch over 400 mini documentaries at youtube.com slash the craft beer channel. And if you love what we do, support us via Patreon and get access to merchandise and our amazing Discord forum, a positive and welcoming space for everyone who loves beer, food and homebrewing. Love and beer. Love and beer.